Hi, I'm Siobhan Sarna. <laughs> this is Stephen Wright, my dear friend who I've known for a very long time, who by trade is an engineer. And he had so many gut health troubles, legit, like seriously embarrassing medical scenarios that I think I hope no one can relate to, but I'm sure a lot of us can on some level. And he has transformed the lives of so many thousands of people because he was one of the first people to uh, really educate online about gut health. So he's super bright. Uh, he was one of my very first coaches to help me with my first SIBO SOS Summit back in the day, 2016 or something. And what I've done is invited him to talk about the supplement line that he finally made, because during that whole time of me knowing Steve, I even knew about his work before I ever met him in person. So it was like meeting one of my idols and because um, he helped me with my leaky gut. And uh, he always said, I was like, Stephen, you have to make a supplement line. He was always like, that's a pain in the butt. I don't want to do that. And then finally, all these years later, he's like, I can't find what I want. I'm going to have to do this. Urgh! And he did it. Thank goodness. So he doesn't have a ton of products. They're just very special, the ones that he does have. Also, he has a great Facebook group and health coaches for those of you who do decide to purchase some of this stuff. Now, that being said, we're going to learn today about probiotics, prebiotics, and parabiotics. He even, thank you, Stephen Wright, has a slideshow presentation for me, you, which I've been wanting to do for over a year, so thank you. Uh, who am I? Hi, I'm Siobhan Sarna. I started SIBO SOS and Chronic Condition Rescue because there was a ton of stuff wrong with me. I figured out what it was. I was totally PO'd that the medical mainstream didn't know what it was, even though I'm a huge fan of medicine and doctors because those people are healers. Some have gone astray, just like other people who say I'm a natural healer have gone astray. We're just people, right? So you're here. You found your tribe. We're so glad. And today we're going to be learning a lot. If you have questions, pop it in the Q&A. One rule is be nice or be gone. And if you would, um, just keep the chat open for strictly technical issues for Clarissa, who's here behind the scenes with us. We do have a nice discount from Stephen for our community exclusively. We'll tell you about that in a little bit. But with that, let's get started. Hi, Stephen. Hey, Siobhan. Thanks for having me. Slide presentation. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I'm just, you know, we're all different kinds of learners. So thank you very much for, for doing that for us. Yeah. Well, please, uh, please forgive my, uh, <laughs> my graphic design skills. There's, this is not, uh, I had no help from anybody on this and you can see it's kind of like a kindergartner put it together, but um, okay. hopefully it's going to help us with our learning today and hopefully uh, I am a visual learner as well, so we'll we'll give it a go here. Uh, attempt number one, <laughs> All right. and I don't even know how to um, make it go live and still be able to see what's happening and like control Zoom. So we're just going to do it this way, and so you right. get to see that my brain looks like this: '90s tabs open all the time. <laughs> all good. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So today we're going to talk about uh, paraprobiotics, probiotics. Um, other things, prebiotics, things like that. Um, Siobhan already, already kind of mentioned a little bit about me, but um, I studied with Kalish in the Functional Medicine uh, Institute over there. Uh, we did have a clinic for a while where we saw, I saw personally about 350 people. The clinic saw close to a thousand. Um, and I've been, you know, on my own health journey. I'm a, I don't identify as a biohack or anything like that. I just can't stop you know, trying to find more resilience. And I'm, I'm a guy who likes to eat pizza and sugar and, and alcohol. And I, I want to be able to do that and not have uh, repercussions. And for most of my life, those things caused me a lot of pain. And uh, so this is kind of a personal journey of, you know, how do I get to be part of the normal crowd, even though I, I didn't necessarily get the best genetics and the best upbringing as far as health goes. So let's start with a very, very confusing set of words. And I wanted to do this 101 style, which is what Siobhan asked, uh, so that I came up with new definitions. I don't think I've ever seen these anywhere else, but I was like, how do I boil this down so that people can really grasp what these, you know, what these areas are? Because it, it's very confusing. You have very scientific, technical definitions. You have very medical definitions. But at the end of the day, I feel like we should, you know, dumb this down to just what's true. And so probiotics, what's true about them is they are alive, helpful bugs. So, I mean, you really can't boil it down much more than that. They are alive and they help us with various things. Paraprobiotics, which we're going to talk a lot about today, and a lot of people aren't really aware of yet, are the fact that there are dead helpful bugs. And alive helpful bugs do different things than dead helpful bugs. And we'll talk about that more. And even the same 
a bug, if you kill it or you keep it alive, it does different things. So it's really cool new science, um, new technology that can really help us with our healing. Prebiotics. These are specialty foods for healthful bugs. Really, that's that's really all it is. It's a specialty uh, extract of certain type, and it it causes certain helpful bugs to grow more. Everybody wants to know about fiber. What's the difference between fiber and prebiotics? Fiber is just general food for bugs. It doesn't discriminate between helpful or harmful or uh, benign. It's just generalized food for the bugs. Resistant starch. This is kind of a new thing as well. Uh, a lot of people are starting to get it. We'll talk more about that probably in the next uh, 12 months if you come to any more talks I do. Uh, this is specific food for special bugs. <laughs> and then postbiotics is the symbiotic output of helpful bugs. And this is a whole conglomeration of, of things. And so most of the time, postbiotics are considered to be short-chain fatty acids. Uh, butyrate is the most important of the short-chain fatty acids. But our bugs make enzymes for us. They make enzymes for other bugs. They make other nutrients. They make uh, minerals. They make vitamins. They make all kinds of really, really cool stuff. And my new analogy that I hope Siobhan loves, I don't think I've told her yet, but my new analogy for our microbiome is it really is like a hippie commune, like the like the idealized version of a hippie commune. Like you gotta you gotta have all the different components. Like Somebody's got to love doing the cooking. Somebody's got to love doing the organization. Somebody's got to love doing the clean end. Somebody's got to love to build things. And if you're missing like various groups that it takes to make a true commune or a true community, um, the community will tend to fall apart or it'll get disorganized and dysbiotic. And so uh, really we want to start to think about uh, our microbiome as this sort of hippie commune. We need all these different species. And in order to create the best, diverse, most resilient community, whether it's in the hippies or we're trying to protect against the zombie attack, whatever it is, these different groups of gut uh, modifiers, I would say, uh, they can help us get the outcomes we're looking for. And so today we don't have time to jump into all six of these areas. Uh, we're going to talk specifically about probiotics and paraprobiotics. And then whenever Siobhan interjects, we might go you know, deeper here or there. Um, but I wanted to start here. Cool. I like the commune. I like it. I like that analogy. <laughs> you knew I cool. would. Yeah. So, so you've had like, you know, Quran, you've had so many amazing awesome people out there who are probiotic experts. And they've talked about these alive, specific, healthful bugs. And you can see I've been uh, very aggressive with my typing here about specific because what the research is becoming extremely loud and clear about now is that the strain of the bug matters more than almost anything. And so if you look at the back of your probiotic and they don't list the strains, um, it's probably not a probiotic you want to be taking anymore. Like that is old technology. I don't care if it says 9 billion units or 900 million, billion, trillion, quadrillion units on the back of it, and it has 50 strains. Those studies did not come out very well. In fact, what they're finding is that very specific bugs do very specific things. And so we want to use those when we need them. And so um, part of the reason why is that alive bugs can help crowd out harmful bugs through resource competition. So they can kind of, they're in the gut, not all of them attach and sort of grow in our gut or recolonize our gut. In fact, most of them do not, but they do try to stay alive, just like all beings try to stay alive if put under pressure. Um, so they will grab resources, food, other things to try to try to stay alive. And they'll end up attaching for a little while to the micro or to the mucosal membrane and do other things to help sort of crowd out potential bad guys or shift the microbiome colony to more healthy, right? It, they might plug in and be the builders that weren't there and help grow, for instance, the acromancia backup. That's what megaspore biotic does so well, right? And so these are very specific bugs though. Um, there's a new one called uh, PS128. That's the strain. I've decided I'm just going to start listing strains so that people get a little confused and they go Google it because I'm sick of people getting um, really confused about the really long names at the beginning, the genus and the species. So 
there's a new brain biotic called PS128 that has some really cool data uh, in mice for increasing dopamine and serotonin. Uh, Megaspore biotic has very specific strains that help increase acromantia. They help decrease leaky gut. They help with the mucus thickness. Um, there's a strain that's lactobacillus rhamnosus GG or LGG that's very effective for raising butyrate. Um, there's a strain that ends in HN019 for constipation. Um, that's really awesome as well. And so these alive bugs can stimulate desired outcomes, depending on what we're hoping to achieve in our gut. Now, there is one issue, which is that alive bugs can be more risky than dead ones to the immunocompromised uh, person. And so this is typically elderly folks. This is people who are on immunosuppressant drugs. Um, it could be somebody who's just really sick. Uh, Siobhan, are you still there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When I'm listening, sometimes my face looks like I'm bored, but I'm not. I'm just staring at the screen listening to you. Oh, got it. Okay, so you turned your camera Somebody off. Somebody told so. me that I looked like I was bored when I was, like, fascinated. So sometimes I okay. turn the camera off instead of me going like oh. this. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Totally cool. So um, so the, the one big downside of probiotics is that there have been, and there is a growing body of evidence that for certain like bedridden people, elderly people, severely immunocompromised people, they can trigger, um, like they can actually trigger immune reaction, sepsis, extra inflammation, and sometimes lead to, uh, lead to even death. Now it's kind of thought of that that's happening through a leaky gut mechanism and, or someone who's just so inflamed already that they you know, most interventions would have hurt them. And so, um, but it's worth noting that these bugs come with some types of risks for certain types of people. The leakier your gut, the worse off you are, it's probably more uh, safer for you. And it's probably more likely that you should start somewhere else. And as you heal your gut, add in the probiotics later, because again, I don't know of a paraprobiotic that helps with constipation yet. I don't know of a specific paraprobiotic that's been studied to raise acromantia yet. Um, so these alive bugs, and there's other ones, there's bugs that, for instance, can help you build muscle mass. These are alive bugs. There's actually, it's T TWK10. You can look it up. They did a study on a live version and the dead version, because this is this is where the research is at, and this is why you don't want the, the random stuff, but TW. K10, the alive version will help you build muscle, even if you're not really doing much. The dead version doesn't help you build the muscle. It does do other things for your immune system, but it's that wasn't really what they were studying. They were trying to study athletes. And so there's going to be very specific strains of bugs, alive and dead, that, that do different things from diarrhea to constipation to leaky gut to brain. And so that's, that's where this conversation uh, needs to move. And that's where we as consumers need to stop buying um, probiotics that are not studied, that the brands that don't list their, their strains and just start returning those products and, and go to other brands. Cause there's plenty of other brands, not just healthy gut that are super high level that are pushing the research forward and making better and better products. Great advice. That's great. Thank you for listing the strains. That's super helpful. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh, any, anything there? Or just keep going. No, keep going. You're doing great. So just a reminder, okay. wait, wait, just a reminder. So yeah, you did it. You were de de defining each kind of probiotic. So this is the para. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to end up going deeper after this. So we're kind of drilling down. I didn't have time to do all six. So if we want to no, go all fine. six, we'll... I think all six would totally be overwhelming at this stage and we can carry on and continue, you know, next time. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. And if people have questions, I'll check out the chat here in a minute. Okay. Um, but first let's talk about para probiotics. Para literally means dead. So if you look up this prefix, it looks, it means dead. So para probiotics are dead specific, again, helpful bugs, meaning that uh, not all dead uh, probiotics, for instance, will be beneficial to you. 
However, specific dead ones are extremely helpful. And in fact, what they're finding is that dead specific strains are actually better for immune support than alive versions of those same bugs. This typically means the outcomes you're looking at fall into categories that are specifically related to immune dysfunction. And this means uh, allergies. So we're talking like hay fever, we're talking environmental allergies, uh, excessive histamine creation. We're talking about skin-related issues, skin dryness, uh, skin rashes, eczema, rosacea, those types of things, uh, acne as well. We're talking about brain-related inflammation. Uh, so you know, this, this can happen for a number of things, a uh, number of reasons, but it's basically inflammation that starts in the gut and propagates up to the brain and then food intolerances. So a lot of food intolerances are related to an immune system. That's a little too hypervigilant and it's like acting, it's getting really mad at you, even though you're trying to eat, for instance, you know, kale or, or cucumber, or even, you know, starch or something like that. So in general, dead bugs are always safer than alive bugs. And so if you fall into that elderly population or the extremely immunocompromised population, what you're about to see and what the research coming out in 2022 and 2023 says is uh, because the dead bugs have no capacity to colonize your gut, they have no capacity to you know, regrow anything. And because if they were to go through your leaky gut, they're already dead. They have no capacity to be inside of the bloodstream or inside of the gall and like uh, attached to things or cause any chaos. They're dead. They're much easier for the immune system to clear. So dead bugs are safer than alive bugs, especially in the elderly populations, immunocompromised populations. Um, dead bugs do not compete with live bugs. So you will see products in the future, maybe from Healthy Gut, maybe from other companies that combine dead bugs with alive bugs to create the most optimal outcomes should you be seeking these things. So they're not in competition. They are together. Again, the, the alive ones do certain things and the dead ones do certain things. Um, and that is, I think, the message that if you get nothing else from this, just know that there's this word called paraprobiotics. There's a bunch of dead probiotics that are going to be coming to market. There are many of them are already here now that are way better at handling certain um issues that we have as humans than the alive versions. And they do it in different pathways that we're going to explore next. What, um, Stephen, this is a loaded question. So be careful. What age is considered elderly? <laughs> Darlene wants to know, Darlene, I want to know how old you are, but it's none of my beeswax, but you know, what, what is that? What um, is you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to define that, uh, okay. but I will say Good. that studies suggest that your immune system's capacity to make antibodies to even the vaccines or to an influenza infection or anything like that starts to drop off, drop off significantly after 70 and definitely starts declining at 65. Um, so I would say over 65, Five is not elderly, but over 65 is a place where your immune system is shutting down and could use some support. Well, oh, thank you. Um, well done. When we're talking about, just if you can incorporate this, how can dead bugs actually do something? Shedding food for other species? What's the mechanism? Great question, question, Kim. You don't have to answer it now if you want to just incorporate it into your, your thoughts there. Yeah, so um, so we have, I have some slides coming up that show a little bit of it, but the thing that the reason why dead bugs are doing something is that they are my best analogy so far is they're like a software update for your immune system. They are a new information about the rest of the world. And when you're when your galt, your M cells and your parent cells take up these these cell membranes and the receptors on those cell membranes, it triggers various upregulations and downregulations. So basically we take this concentrated, small concentrated powder and it it's it's like eating something or just like if you were to go smell a pine tree when it was like, you know, really fragrant or something like that. That that's phytochemical information about your environment. So these specific dead bugs are information about your environment that cause various upregulations and downregulations inside of your immune system located in your gut. And many of those things are related to the uh, 
the mostly to the adaptive system of the immune system, but um, it could do both sides. Okay, and can you define GALT one more time if you haven't already? Gut associated lymphoid tissue. So this is basically the tissue that surrounds our intestines. This is essentially where 80 to 90% of your immune system is located. And it's, it's like literally right outside your intestines. And so um, in and around uh, innervated, but essentially um, a lot of the, it's almost like, I think one way to think about this, it's almost like you have, your body has various ways to continually, continuously sample your intestines. They have uh, like little tentacles and little molecules. And there's always like information coming in, in your, in your gut. And right outside that, the gall is sort of always monitoring what's happening. And then from there, it's sending off cytokines and other messengers around the body. And these are sort of messengers to say like, hey, uh, turn this up. Hey, turn this down. Here's some extra cells. Hey, make some antibodies. Hey, make some, um, you know, make downregulate some inflammation, things like this. And so those signals propagate out to the rest of our bodies. In some cases, uh, if the inflammation is being driven one way, or if there, if there's like too much activity being driven one way, then we end up with things like brain fog. We end up with skin rashes. We end up with other issues. Um, and so the, the dead bugs interact with that gall and they change the signaling that's coming from your gut to different, different signals, basically up or down. Thank you. Okay. Carry on. You're doing great. So, so this is one specific paraprobiotic strain called Amuse. Um, it's a lactobacillus lactis strain. And the, the person just asked, like, what's the mechanism of action? This mechani mechanism of action, they sampled this company. You got to remember, these companies put like $10, $20 million into these research projects, okay? They sampled all these, these um, lactis strains. And they found that this particular lactis, uh, lacto amuse strain, lactococcus lactis, whew, plasma strain, they called it plasma. So you can search each other, either LC plasma on Google or amuse, you'll get a bunch of stuff. Um, basically what they found is that this one, but not a rest of the other ones, uh, got taken up by M cells in the gall. And when it did that, it it activated these plasma cytoid dendritic cells and plasma cytoid dendritic cells are sort of like the commanders that um, bridge basically the innate immunity and the adaptive immunity. And they're able to modulate natural killer cells, killer T cells, helper T cells, and B cells. Most of the things like for instance, beta glucans mostly just uh, act on natural killer cells. Now, natural killer cells are part of your innate immunity versus um, these three over here are part of your adaptive immune system. And so plasmacytoid dendritic cells can kind of regulate both sides, whether they're turning up or turning down the action between the innate and the adaptive immunity. They found that plasmacytoid dendritic cells tend to be low in people who have poor immune system responses to things like colds and flus and, and other things like that, especially the viruses. Um, and they do it through this uh, interferon alpha. Now, if you're you know a super smart, curious nerd out there, you probably have already Googled this and you'll find that some people have really high activation of plasma cytoid dendritic cells in, in some autoimmune cases. It has not been my experience um, over the last year plus that we've had this strain on the market under our company or anybody else's uh, experience from this the, the company that created this product that it aggravates people with autoimmune conditions. Because I would say probably 70 to 80% of our customers have one and they get big time benefit from this, this particular product. So, um, but that's that's one strain and that's one way that it specifically uh, modulates the immune system, even though it's dead. It's crazy. Cause when we hear the word dead, we're all just so used to like going, oh, well, there's no potency there. Hey, I know some people have to leave early. We hope you don't, but um, Clarissa has a discount coupon code. Well, it's actually automatically applied at checkout. Clarissa, if you could pop that into the chat for everybody, um, and that's going to give you a discount on the products that Steven is talking about, including, what is the name of the product that has the Amuse in it? Uh, it's Holoimmune. Yes, 
Holoimmune. So I just wanted to show that to you. I know we're getting there, but in case you have to bolt, um, the information will be in the chat. Okay. Are you correcting your cool. spelling during this presentation? I'd love you for that. <laughs> not yep. that I could yes, tell I if something was not spelled correctly in the <laughs> screen. All right. So can, can you see this GIF? Is it working? Oh, look at you, fancy pants. Yes, I can. Okay. Let's make it a little bigger, maybe. Okay. Well, so I, yeah, great. So um, this is another pair of probiotics. Like Lactobacillus acidophilus L92, and this is a gift that they put together that I swiped for our for our talk today um, about basically allergies. So we're you know it's springtime right now, at least in northern hemisphere, and people wonder like what's happening. As you can see here, the uh, normal circumstances are your Th1 and your Th2 side of your immune system are completely balanced, and one of the reasons they stay balanced is that. Uh, that teeter-totter is always kind of going up and down, but you need these T regulatory cells and also T helper cells to sort of uh, make sure the teeter-totter stays balanced. And so in this case, allergens come in, dendritic cells, which we just talked about, tend to uh, be the ones who communicate a lot to various types or various sides of the immune system. I kind of mentioned that briefly. They're going to activate your B cells uh, to start to you know, make antibodies, IgE antibodies to this allergen. If you don't have enough T regulatory cells to push back on this process, it can get really, really slanted. And then if you layer on things like um, excessive histamine production, more inflammation from other areas of your body, um, things like that, uh, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And so one of the cool things about lactobacillus acidophilus is it works in a, a totally different way than the, the immune strain. It boosts the T regulatory cell production. And then it also helps block excessive IgE formation. And this is super important for people with eczema and people with hay fever. They've done studies both on kids and adults for eczema and hay fever. And they find that at the four week, eight week and 12 week period, the people who are taking the lactobacillus acidophilus L92 experience less and less of the reaction. So if it's hay fever, they have less, you know, nose congestion or itchy eyes or whatever the symptoms are for eczema, it's less uh, skin eruptions, things like that. And so, um, yeah, so this is just a really cool one that does it, it does it in a totally different way. Right. Awesome. And this is, I forgot that they built this one too. So this is what happens. It, it helps um, increase the Treg cells, inhibit the Th2 uh, IgE formation. So I th I think they haven't studied it, but I believe that this is one of the reasons why um, the people who take holoimmune also seem to have a easier time with food reintroductions because I believe the excessive IgE production is being tampered down so that they can actually handle more foods. Cool. Very cool. Okay. So the last strain uh, in holomine, the last strain to talk about today, paraprobiotic, is called Amino LP20 um, Lactobacillus plantarum HK137. So you can search HK137 or LP20. You should get a bunch of studies. They've done, uh, this company's done almost 30 studies now, or I'm sorry, the Amuse strain. They've done almost 30 studies now, uh, half of which are in humans, half are in animals. Uh, L92 is done maybe like 10, eight to 10. And LP20 has done uh, over 10 um, and they're quickly increasing rapidly with their, with their strain research. Um, this strain is really cool. It helps boost IL-12 and uh, T helper cells. And this is more on the TH1 side of the immune system. So a lot of people will ask like, uh, you know, I've, I've heard that I have, or I have data that suggests I have a Th2 dominance or Th1 dominance, things like this, wouldn't taking one of these paraprobiotic strains hurt me or cause that to get exasperated? And that has not been our case. We don't know if it's because we're combining two strains that do opposite mechanisms in the same capsule or not. It is part of the design of the product, part of what I did there. Um, but we have not seen that be an issue. And so the cool thing about this one is they have studies on helping dry skin in humans, helping improve periodontal disease pocket depth, which is the study right here, um, helps recovery from cold and flu, lowers inflammation in people with metabolic syndrome. And so again, it is, it is handling or helping, not handling, but it's helping many conditions from your 
your literally your your gums to your skin to inflammation markers, even though it's dead, and even though it's in a really really small amount, like the the amount in the the LP20 is only uh, 50 milligrams. So this is just a 50 milligram study, and they're continuing to bring out more and more of these. And I think the point is is that these specific dead strains boost certain pathways. And so if we can get smarter about testing or being aware of the symptomology of what you might need boosted, we can use alive and dead bugs to help modify that specific pathway to get the end result we're looking for. Interesting. Really interesting. And periodontal pockets, you know, I'm into biological dentistry. Like that is one of the toughest things to deal with. So that's really, really hopeful. All right, go ahead and pop up the last slide if you would, Steve. And thank you. All right, so this is the recap of what Holoimmune has. I know that, um, I know, doesn't Shay, your lovely wife, like fight you for this? If <laughs> you're down yeah, to the last yeah. few on the bottle. Yeah, yeah, so Shay, um, Shay's my wife and I love her dearly. And uh, as many of you might know, your your partner in crime and partner in life may not be as into health or into the same health related things you are. And it can be kind of a slug and the same thing happens in my household. Um, she also doesn't have gut related issues. So she's never really been into these products other than supporting me and supporting the research and the, and the company. She's never really taken them. And um, Part of the reason why I built Holoimmune was to upregulate the immune system when I realized that so many people were having trouble with, you know, this novel virus and wanting just to be more protected. And so I wanted all, I wanted strains that were, were studied in influenza. So all three of these strains that I just mentioned uh, in Holoimmune have been studied in humans for influenza. They don't, they don't prevent it. They don't treat it. They just help the recovery from it. And so that's what the studies show. And so I was trying to build Holoimmune to, to try to just help us feel a little better, be a little bit more protected because I can't live in a bubble. I told you earlier, I like chocolate, I like sugar, I like wine, and I know it's you know probably bad for me, but I don't really care. Um, and so I couldn't stay locked down. Uh, I needed to be able to be out in the world, but I also want to be safe about it. And so um, Holoimmune was my creation. And so it's, it's the three paraprobiotics I just mentioned. It's uh, 250 milligrams of 1316 beta glucans, which has really cool data uh, for secretory IgA and other GALT associated uh, improvements in humans. Um, together, this is the first product in the world. It's been on the market for just over a year now. Um, we've almost sold close to 10,000 bottles have been sold now. Um, and it's the first a uh, triple paraprobiotic out there. And if you if you want to think about it, technically, and I think I'm still the first one to ever say this, beta-glucans are like a para yeast biotic. They're dead yeast cell walls. So I don't know why anybody hasn't talked about that yet, but that's what those are too. Well, um, how would it how would it work if you have candida and yeast overgrowth? It's not it's not contraindicated at all because it's dead, number one. Um, and number two, just like I mentioned, um, we want specific bacteria because specific each strain does something slightly different than the other strain. Um, different yeast strains do the same thing. So uh, Candida is different than the 1316 beta-glucan uh, yeast strain that's in Holomune. And so they can't count on them to do the same things. And again, this one's dead, has no chance of like blooming or growing or anything like that. Um, and uh, so I think that's hard for, it was hard for me to grasp. I imagine it's going to be really hard for a lot of other people to grasp that, um, that dead material is basically like software updates for your immune system to retolerize it to the world. I mean, frankly, that's, that's literally what it's doing. It's re it's helping you get in better relation to your environment, whether that's food, whether that's candida, some sort of infection, whatever that might be, it's upregulating that possibility. That is amazing. Okay, go ahead, Stephen, and let me see your beautiful face. Thank you for sharing your screen with us. I appreciate it so much. That is awesome. Yeah, and and so I forgot, Shay, uh, Shay started taking hold of me because I was like, please take this, please take this, please take this. <laughs> and her mom had passed away. So she was a little depressed and she was kind of coping like we all do with certain things. And she plays like the Wordle games, like the guess the crossword games all the time. Yeah. 
Um, she, she would never identify as having brain fog. She would never identify as having an aging brain, but she started taking whole immune and she started like quickly going up the levels, like way faster. Like she'd been playing this game for like weeks. And when she takes whole immune, she basically is like double the quickness on solving the puzzles in the, the game. And so she's pretty addicted to it. I wish I got some brain benefit like that. Um, but I don't seem to have that, you know, associated inflamed, 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 uh, pathway. Um, now what's fascinating is that Shay has a, uh, has a history with cancer. And so part of what we had been seeking last year was, uh, a level of studies that could help us transition from active cancer treatment to back to sort of just uh, biohacking slash um, anti-aging life extension. And uh, I've searched the world. If you know somebody, Siobhan, please tell me, but I have not found anybody who can help you make that transition. Where's the line in the sand where you go from, I uh, had cancer to, I don't really identify with that anymore. I'm just actively aging with you know respect to what's happened to me prior so we found a doctor in scottsdale arizona we ran twenty five thousand dollars worth of testing on her and found zero evidence of cancer or cancer related pathways that were going to be you know activating that way but what we did find was a little bit of inflammation related to her brain and so i think it's just kind of fascinating that some cytokines related to her brain were elevated and that whole immune was helping her with her, you know, with her word puzzles. And so not everybody that takes whole immune gets the brain benefit, but um, it seems to be mostly women over 35 um, who, yeah, are just kind of stressed and, uh, you know, maybe not actively brain fogged, if you will. That is really interesting. I love that. Okay, somebody's asked about what are the three strains. So I just want to share my screen for a second. Thank you, Stephen. That was a great presentation. Here are the um, the strains, just so you can see them. This is what he was describing on the um, on the presentation, and you guys are all going to get the replay. And you all can all go look at this page if you click the link that Clarissa has put in there. So I just wanted to show you. Just scroll down, and there's tons of science on that page. So. Um, it's, it's an opportunity for you to um, get connected with Steven. He has a great Facebook group for people who are customers and it's $15 off by shopping through our link. Thank you. Um, by doing that, your price is actually better. I was gonna say your price doesn't change because some affiliates say that, but it's actually better because I arm wrestle with Steven. I win sometimes. And so I get him to give us that discount. And we love you for it, Steven. And um, you also do get free shipping in the United States. He does ship globally. There is a charge for the shipping outside the U.S., um, but he has um, people who are getting helped all over the world from it, from um, these formulations. Also, check out the rest of the formulations on his site, but definitely go and check it out. And do you get 15 off if you've purchased before? If you go in there and you purchase right now, you get that $15 off. Yes, you do. And it's applied at checkout. Like we thought we'd save everybody a step. Sometimes it backfires and people are like, I didn't see a place to put the coupon. You just go ahead yeah. and know that it's applied at checkout, right, Stephen? Yeah, or it's SIBO SOS. We're running into a world where we're no longer going to have that technology because everybody wants privacy. And so now everybody's got, you know, Apple devices and privacy oh. blockers and VPNs. And okay. so if you're somebody who's up on the privacy game and you're trying to use your Safari or your Chrome uh, ad block blockers and things like that, just know that you may need to enter the coupon code and there's okay. nothing we can do about that. Okay. Um, and it's SIBO SOS. Okay, cool. Very cool. Thank you. All right, we've got some questions for you. What about kids? Can kids take this? Hi, Linda. Can children take this? And by the way, none of this is medical advice. This is just educational information for you. Speak with your practitioners, especially if you have a serious medical condition, please. This is not medical advice. What do you feel globally about kids taking something that is like well this? Well, the study, they've already done some of the studies on six-year-olds and up. Um, the other study had some on, uh, I think, four-year-olds and up. So uh, I think for the most part, especially if you start off with sprinkles over two, not under two at all, but definitely if you want to be safe above six um, would be would be great. And we do have a growing list of you know autistic uh, mm -hmm. clinics that are starting to trial the product. And so yeah. I'll know in six months to 12 months, you know, if there's any effect there, there's, there's no data back yet. All right. Um, how large are the pills? Can they be opened and put into applesauce? Hi, Christy. 
Yes, the pills can be opened. Again, it's dead stuff. It, you don't need to protect it from anything. Stomach acid can't kill it. It's already dead. Um, and the capsules are very small. They're, um, yeah, they're they're like the they're, smallest. They're they're tiny. Yeah, I have a question. Small. I have a question. When we're saying dead, is it like when a carrot is pulled out of the earth and it's really kind of dead, or is it? Do you know what I mean? Like when we're saying the word dead. I just want to get a little clarity around that because when we think of dead, we think of like not even bio, bio uh, bioactively available to be good. But then I started thinking the potato that's been pulled out of the ground that I eat a week, month, whatever later, is it technically dead? I mean, I think maybe technically it'd be dead and it's still look at what it does. I would, yeah, I'd say then the best analogy would be flash frozen food. So okay. Um, okay. it is definitely dead. There's no biological processes yeah. because they kill okay. it using steam. Usually there's lots of other different ways, but these specific companies typically um, are mostly using high, higher, uh, not higher pressure, but you can use pressure to kill them. You can use radiation to kill them, but these, these companies are using heat. And so what is true though, is whatever chemicals and whatever compounds in that cell wall were available at the time of you know, freezing, right? Clamping down, killing, they're still there. They're they're preserved. So it's basically like preserved bacteria, I guess. Okay. In a way. Okay. I just wanted to kind petrified? of get a, I don't know. Petrified might be another way to say it. A little bit of different like context around the word dead. And also thanks, Clarissa has put in the links for still getting that $15 off on Holozyme, which is Stephen's very special digestive enzyme that people swear by, the HCL guard, which we had a phenomenal presentation from him last month about uh, low stomach acid, the magnesium HP, which is my favorite magnesium, which is saying a lot, and then tributyrin X, um, which is phenomenal for leaky gut. So when we send the replay, there'll be a link for you all to go and watch today over again. And um, you'll also be able to see all of the other presentations Stephen and I have done over the past several months. So if you're like, oh, that sounds good. What's the difference? It's like listed all right there and you can watch and just play us in the background like a podcast or something. So uh, we like to just continue the learning. Um, okay, where can we access the research in humans to support these formulas? Um, well, start with Google. Okay. Um, I haven't like put them all on one web page yet. So take the strains and Google them. You can also go to l-92.net. You can go to amino lp20.com, uh, I believe. Um, and then amuse.com. So, uh, these, uh, companies are very proud of the products that they have brought to market and they're trying to get the, the studies out there, but even they are not, uh, I don't find their websites the easiest to use, frankly. And if you were just to go to pubmed.com and search HK137 or Amino LP20, you'll find a lot more data um, than, than what you can just find there. So, okay. Um, Derek, question. When the solar plexus chakra associated with the gut bacteria is overpowering, how do you settle the fight, excuse me, the flight and fight reaction from the gut? Does any product reduce the micro stresses arising out of a reactive flight and fight? from the pit of your stomach, gut and gut bacteria. Am I making sense? Derek, you are making sense, but I want to just bring in sort of a, I'm a yoga teacher, so I'm totally with you on the chakra, but the vagus nerve, because that's really that, that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, that is sort of the melding of everything right there. And so you want to be able to be more in parasympathetic than sympathetic. And the way I remember that is sympathetic. Give me some sympathy. I'm so stressed parasympathetic is I'm chill, I'm rest and digest. Steve, what do you have? I mean, you said, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything else to say. Like you, okay. I mean, trial some, <laughs> trial some vagal stimulation related stuff. Uh, you can try herbs, you can try uh, cold therapy, you can try singing, you can try devices, things like that. But yeah, I would start like there. Frequency specific microcurrent, meditation, yeah. acupuncture, but if you're looking to reduce the bacterial load of your like small intestine, 
not like, but your small intestine, that is small intestine bacterial overload, overload, overgrowth and overload. That's SIBO. So I just want to know, like, have you tested for SIBO? Those are some of my questions surrounding your excellent question. Um, okay, let's see. My probiotic from Anonymous states LA14 and LP115. Is that the same? Yeah. So here, I am going to trial this for everybody and show you how easy this is. So Thank people you. tend yeah. to tell me. We are not Google. Be be your own Google, but here you go. Look what Steven's doing for you. Yeah. So I just took your I took your thing and I just typed it right into Google. Um, it's not the same. I remember um, I said um, L-92. Um, this it looks like. This is an lactobacillus acidophilus LA14. So, okay, so a few things. Number one is this is awesome, right? This probiotic, this manufacturer put their strains on the bottle. That's a great start. Number two awesome thing is we just search it and we find out that these strains are actually studied. They're not just like made up numbers, right? So um, it's, you know, clearly LP115 is like a real, it's a real bug that people have done studies on. And so this is, this is legitimately how I look these bugs up. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is how I would suggest that you go look them up. So the question is like, what is, what does this one do? Technical memorandum looks like it's been studied for IBS. Um, it's a live bug. It's not a dead bug. Um, it's able to be resistant against bile. And so you don't need a special, uh, you don't need a special capsule. Um, but yeah, so the research suggests uh, GI well-being, immune system modulation. Um, it looks like there's, you know, I guess probably it. some other things, but yeah. this is how I do it. And so yeah. you would do the exact same thing. Too. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. What if allergy symptoms in quotes are from histamine? How does this work with histamine? Is this a product that is better? Is this product better than a product to calm the histamine? That's um, so, so whole immune is uh, about 30% of the people who are healthy gut customers have histamine intolerance of some type. They have an overexpression of histamine. And, um, if you are in a state where you're reliant on, uh, antihistamines every single day, you can't take clear, or I mean, you can't, you can't even take curcumin. Like you're really in a really banged up place. Whole immune will likely cause a reaction just like regular stuff is causing for you. Like if you can't take curcumin, you can't take whole immune. All right. But if you're past that hump or you're less histamine reactive, holoimmune can be your best friend because, um, for instance, one of the things with Shay that I was like, hey, this is not cool, is like she's been on Claritin on and off every single year mm. since she was a girl for seasonal allergies. This year, this past year, has been the first year she's not using any Claritin. She's just using two holoimmune a day. Um, wow, and so I'm big. not saying that, yeah, it's, it's super, super huge. So I'm not saying that that, you know, whole immune replaces Claritin. It's on the same wavelength or anything like that. But I am saying that the pathways are highly connected. And if you have histamine intolerance, part of what's happening is the signaling mechanisms between the dendritic cells, the mast cells, and the rest of the gut are a little confused and a little uh, hypervigilant, basically. And so that's where something like paraprobiotics and whole immune can help retrain tolerance to the outside world, whether it's pollen from a tree or from grass or from food particles. All right, Barbara, uh, I love your products. My question is, what do you know about using the probiotic that is derived from human breast milk along with the bovine colostrum after treating SIBO? Two naturopaths have recommended this to me, but I don't want to backslide, thanks. Um, I mean, I, I haven't, I without the names of the, the products, I can't tell you much, Barbara, but you have the I names? mean, bovine colostrum, if that's IgG, if that's, Immunolin IgG, it's a great product. Um, you need to take it in higher dosages, usually five to 15 grams a day, depending on the person. Start lower, start at two grams or two and a half grams. But many people don't see a lot of improvement till they hit the five gram or more mark uh, for immunolin. Um, there's another, there's a egg-based um, extraction called IgY Max, which is also really helpful for uh, tolerance and improvement of, of histamine and other sort of immune related symptoms. Uh, that one also needs to be around four to five grams. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, look, here's the thing, like 
I am, I am like such a hyper consumer of I like as many books as I have behind me, I have bottles in the house. Like I order stuff that's research only from all over the world. And Siobhan knows this. And I just love trying to find the newest and latest and greatest. And so, um, what I want to say is that there's no such thing as, uh, like wasted time or money, uh, and the backslide will, will revert back if you, if you trigger something. I've done it like a literally thousands of times. What it does is it gives you data. So for instance, if you decide today, like, hey, I want to try this whole immune. It's allergy season. Maybe this dude's crazy. Maybe this dude's onto something. Maybe this paraprobiotic thing is going to take off. I think it will, by the way. Um, give it a shot. If it doesn't work, the reason, why, one of the reasons why I built healthy gut is because you should be able to get your money back in health. I don't understand why every other industry you can get your money back. Like if your phone stops working the first 10 days, you can get your money back. Right. If the product doesn't work for you, you can just email us. We'll probably ask you a few questions just to see if you got the dosing right. And then we'll just give you your money back because I think that's how it should work because you should be able to take that money and then go try Immunolin or go try an HMO or some other product like that. Okay. Um, thank you. So Prava is asking about strains for erectile dysfunction. I don't know if you know of any, but like Dr. Ruscio on his site, March 8th, 2022, I just Googled it. Not much research exists about probiotics to help with sexual health, but some show a correlation, the ones that do exist. So Stephen. I mean, it's not my area. I, it's no, not I his area. Okay. Tried. Yeah. Okay. I know I'm there's gonna... vaginal health probiotics. I don't know of any erectile. Okay. And what about blood sugar imbalance? I mean, there's the pendulum probiotic, which, which, you know, they, they, they showed a drop in, I think your HAB1C, if I'm saying that correctly, but the blood sugar measurement over time. Um, so uh, yeah, the question is if we tested other strains, would they do the same thing? I think that's curious. I don't think anybody's done it yet. Um, but yeah, I think uh, just like Holozyme has preliminary data that it shows an 18% reduction in postprandial uh, glucose readings. So I think enzymes and probiotics definitely shift your glucose curve and total response for sure. Okay, cool. Let's talk about the elephant in the room for those of you who do have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Are probiotics, paraprobiotics, postprobiotics, postbiotics, like where do those play a role? As I always say, you have a snowflake microbiome. You absolutely deserve to experiment to try things because the, they are magic bullets for some people. Some people, they're not. You have to give them enough time. You have to slowly um, titrate up um, or whatever that word is, is build up to it. And also, if the one thing that Dr. Seebecker, Allison Seebecker, SIBO expert and my main colleague in all of these projects is, is says, if you're gonna do it, do it before treatment so that, and then continue during treatment so that if you are going to now go ahead and get uh, a positive, meaning a negative, because you don't have the higher levels of overgrowth, a SIBO breath test, you wouldn't wanna introduce a probiotic then. She's like, just keep, keep the grounds you've made, be sure to get on a prokinetic because that's gonna do the sweeping motion. This is a bigger conversation, but, um, Remember that once you've reduced the bacterial overload, the microbiome often comes back into a much happier place. So I know a lot of people want to, you know, get, oh, I, I've, I've cleared SIBO. Now I want to get my microbiome built back up. If, if you've been doing it the whole time, carry on. But you, really, the timing does matter there. And also, you know, this is everybody's so different to Stephen's point experiment. He's going to give you that money back during a certain window if it's not working for you. He's going to give you coaching support in the Facebook group of his. I mean, this is everything Stephen and I wanted in supplement companies. That's what he's doing. He He's like, I wish these supplement companies and these supplement companies would be doing this. And so that's what he's come to market with, which is one of the reasons why I'm so happy to be able to sharing this information with you, to share this information with you and give you that nice discount. So there, the last question I am going to be able to ask. I want to say something on that. So yeah. the question, the question is, is a poor question. We have to move the conversation forward. Thank the you. question is not, should I take this probiotic? Is it is, is this strain in my probiotic studied for SIBO? That's you the go. question you're actually you wanting go. to ask. And the answer is there is no probiotic that I know of that has ever been studied 
to make SIBO go away faster. So if your entire goal is to get SIBO to go away and you're trying to build the proper protocol to keep it away, you're looking for a strain that's been studied for that or for a mechanism that is known to help SIBO go away. I don't know of any. I do know that paraprobiotics support the immune system, which is necessary to keep it away, right? Secretory IgA, we need that proper. So holoimmune would not, has not been studied to make SIBO go away. It's been studied to help the mechanisms of your immune system that would keep it away. And you would want to search out other probiotics that do that. Now, if you were to come to me and say, um, I have SIBO and I have constipation and I'm doing the SIBO protocol and I would like to poop on a regular basis. Is there a probiotic for that? I would say there is HN019. You could go buy that specific strain and take that for your constipation and you should be pretty good. But if you're part of the group that, you know, Dr. Seebecker is saying like, hey, maybe now is not the right time. There's a number of other ways to deal with your constipation. Magnesium glycinate, um, sun fiber, other prebiotics can help, you know, eat a kiwi a day, eat dried prunes. These types of things are other ways to solve the same problem. So ask the question, what probiotic takes rashes away? What probiotic takes constipation away? What probiotic takes diarrhea away? And what is the strain in my, in my bottle what has been studied to do that if we can move the conversation there, there a lot of these questions will will you'll find the answer really quickly and it's probably uh you'll get better outcomes much faster it'll be less confusing for sure okay thank you uh kombucha and have you ever heard of any kombucha with specific strains Stephen? um i think there are some companies that are starting to like try to make it like functional beverages or functional products um I think you're sort of bastardizing the point of fermented foods. The point of fermented foods is to get a massive exposure to a ton of wild strains that are probably never going to be cultivated in a lab. And so I think that's one of the reasons why sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha can be very helpful. Again, you're getting this retolerization to thousands of, of wild species. So I would, I would, to me, they're that view them in different ways. Like, yes, have your fermented foods, but if you're still experiencing constipation, skin issues, whatever, choose a choose a product for that specific outcome. Cool. Thank you. Okay, I want to show you a little recap here. Um, here is the here's the the pricing expires April 14th. Today is the 10th. So I hope you get a chance to go ahead and you know place your orders ASAP with that discount. In the chat, Clarissa had posted the links for the other products that also. Um, you can add to your shopping cart. So this is your opportunity right now to try something new, to try something for you or, you know, or reorder, I think, um, so that you'll be able to really um, experience something different. Like if you feel like you've tried everything, I definitely feel like this is worth a try for you. And I have a lot of people who swear by holozymes. I do. We watched that HCL presentation we did last time. Um, if you're worried about stomach acid and GERD, and he talks about how to do the test for that. Um, so it's just been a really tremendous opportunity to work with you, Stephen, and have all of you here. It's such an honor. Thank you so very much for being here. Um, Clarissa, thank you for being here behind the scenes and so reliable and sweet and smart all at the same time. And Stephen, keep up the great work. I can't wait to see you next month and see what else you're up to. And um, I think that's a wrap. Any other thoughts? Pop some love into the chat for Stephen, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just thank you all for coming. Thanks for being at the edge of this topic. I know it's confusing. I know that, um, you know, being told that the other way might be wrong is sometimes annoying. It was for me, but my goal is really just to help you heal. It's to help move the conversation forward. So we all spend less time um, worrying about our health and more time out in nature with our friends, with our families. You know, that sounds great. I love your approach. It's extremely realistic and balanced i think it is cutting edge it is um something that i don't think a lot of people are talking about and um i really appreciate you so thanks everybody thanks everyone. big hugs all right we'll send out the replay you'll get the links if you didn't weren't able to capture them right now and we'll see you next time take care bye thanks Stephen. <laughs>